Enzo.com. I believe that the freedom of speech is a universal international right, that all opinions shall be tolerated regardless if agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, not from it, freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually. I believe in the separation of church and state and corporation. I believe that truth Truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts, as there are no absolute truths, except the word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers have philosophized, and our founding fathers debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. And no individual shall be indemnified of criticism or mockery, for there is honesty, honesty in jest. jest. I pledge that the ideas I share are my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race, and I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation, with their opinions being their own, with my opinions being my own, for association does not always equal shared beliefs. I pledge to perform in a professional, dignified manner and not bully, harass, or slander my fellow human Human creatures to refrain from hate, anger, sedition, sedition vulgarity, harassment, pornography, pornography, cautioning that satire and, and sar sarcasm, sarcasm can at times be misinterpreted, be misinterpreted as such. I believe in the counter-speech doctrine, that the remedy to negative, harmful speech is more positive, helpful speech, not enforced silence, that no person shall be denied access to social media, which is the marketplace of ideas, and today's town square, that Section 230 privatizes communism and legalizes libel and stalking, and that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution, because we are all considered of the human party and humans are fallible amen pow all right get ready folks it's Ooh, another it's episode it's louder than enzo show episode 145 <laughs> Enzo.com fat dot com fat 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 fatty fat bastard oh I'm sorry, I'm going to say Hail Mary for that one. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, is with thee. Blessed art thou most women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Boom! Hey, everybody! Good, oh, good morning! Good morning, new followers! Welcome uh, to the Fat Enzo Show. Yes. And we are your two intense enthusiasts yes. delivering you your daily digital dose of divinity. That's right. We are your Catholic litur litur liturgy show on steroids and cocaine. And when Ooh, I say yeah. that, I'm not being sacrilegious. I'm being satirical. That's ah. all. 
We are not ordained priests. No, we are not. We, we are, are not, not prophets. prophets. We are We're just, just people. people. We're not perfect. Nope, not at all. We're just podcasters who yep. have done our research by going to mass daily. Every single daily. day. We eat the host. We're hosts who eat the host. Ooh, Catholic dad joke again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, and uh, welcome. It is Thursday of the 29th week in Ordinary 29 time. weeks? Yeah, 29th. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. This year's going and right Thursday, now. October 20th, in the year of our Lord, 2022. <coughs> now, to start off, I got to ask you this. What? What did we already forget, partially? Oh, not really. Because you know what that means, folks? The podcast has, has begun. And it also means to like and subscribe and share. Oh, yes, it does. Every time you hear that bell, you can put a dollar in the basket or give us a like, share, <laughs> comment. Yeah, and not just on this stupid platform. This platform is going to have us. Oh, it's controlled opposition. This platform is going to have us bounced in two seconds, two segundos. Probably. <laughs> um, anybody that is sharing any of the Yay podcast mm, mm -hmm. is immediately banned. Or, you know, I mean... You, they take the video down due to the copyright yeah, stuff. That's then, yeah, that's what's happening to us. We actually received our first warning yesterday. Check it out. Yeah, we did. Look at this. I have to say, I'm pretty surprised it took this long. It was our first warning. Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry. No, this is just is backup stuff. That is something else. That's something else. But yeah, we Here's actually, our first we warning. We actually got our first warning. There it is. And there after 140, well, I guess 44 episodes. Yes, I got to say, one morning per 144 episodes. That's, Hi, Fat that's Enzo. Okay. Our team has re reviewed your content. Unfortunately, we think it violates, think it violates our Thanks. hate speech policy. We've removed the following content from YouTube. Uh, FES 141, be persistent in the Holy Spirit. That was the one where we played the Kanye thing. Uh, when, he, when he was on that drinking podcast. He was on the Drinking uh, Champs podcast. Yep. So anybody who plays Kanye stuff... Or yay. Yay. Or you start talking about him. I mean, I think that it's going to even, it's going to start getting to that level. It they're might. just trying to give you a little slap on the wrist, slap on the hand, tell you, you know, they're, they're coming over, the nun's coming over with a ruler and she's hitting <laughs> me over the knuckles. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, don't play that. Look at Cerno Cernovich. Can anyone explain why this tweet wasn't removed like Ye's was? Look at this is a bishop, Bishop Talbert Swan. Whiteness is an unrelenting demonic force of evil. Underneath, somebody uh, replies, whiteness isn't a religion or ethnicity, but you knew that already. Someone underneath that. If I said this about your race, I would be banned in a second. Well, the, true. the Bible is a story of black people migrating from Africa to the Middle East who thought cursed skin would blister, burn, and prevent one from tending the olive groves, vineyards, or sheep in the hot sun to provide for their family cursed from Genesis 9 seems worse. Furthermore, Lucifer in Isaiah 14, 12 is noted as being a bright light, a white light. Okay. As even the earliest Catholics identified this as the devil, we get it. We get that white light devil would be the first and original Satan to the Bible lands composed entirely of black people. Um, I need that Twitter has a completely different set of rules for their fellow leftists. Yes. Twitter, YouTube, well, all of them, true. all of them controlled. And then oh, yay was on the road opposition. Yay was on, um, Pierce Morgan show. And then, uh, but we can't play really like anything. We can play like this two seconds or whatever, but uh -oh. I mean, he went nuts. Come. I'm about to suggest to you how you may grow if you choose to grow this way. And you, can, you can ignore no, me. You Pierce, can ignore Pierce, me. Pierce, Pierce, how much money are you worth? Not as much as you, sadly. Exactly. So take my advice. Maybe you'll get richer. I would love to take your business advice. Why would I listen to you? <laughs> I, well, why do you... Why do you <laughs> Outstanding. I mean, that's nothing because I just don't want to... You know, I'm scared. No, you're right. But that, that's actually kind of funny. You guys got to check that out. That's a crazy interview. He's like, are you... Are, are you um, uh, you know, uh, you know, sa uh, sorry at all for for saying what you said, the anti-Semitic stuff. He's like, <laughs> no, no. He's like, I'm using, and they're like, it's hateful. He's like, I'm using hate with hate, using hate with hate, using race with race. That's what they do. It's crazy. 
I mean, <laughs> oh my you God. know, and this is. He is so like, yeah. I don't know. And the funny thing was that, that one of those lines, like where it's like, oh, people talk about this in the back room from that one video we talked about. Where they're like, oh, yeah, people talk silently about things like this. Well, you know what? That's, that's not totally true. I don't feel like everybody speaks that way on other people or other races like that. But there is a, I always seem to find there's some kind of unity with that. Like, I'm going to say this. Somebody. I've been in, I've been in um, dinners yep. where people started talking about the most anti-Semitic stuff. I have too, but you I have? I have, but I also know that, that it seems if it's not I know it's true. Semitic. I know it's true. A lot of people feel this way. I, 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 you know, yes. I'm not going to lie, it's true. People feel mm. this way. They do, but it's funny Why do they just, feel this way? Is it all just wrong? Are they they're being jerks. They're all being racist. They're all being anti-Semitic. There's nothing behind it whatsoever. Nothing. Because I secretly think that in a way everybody is unified, I hate to say it like this, but by a, some form of a hate towards another whatever. There's always a, or if you want to change the word hate, which will make it a lot different now, competitive-like. And in other words, everybody kind of picked their own team. Like, <coughs> if you get what I mean when you choose your friends and stuff like that, right? Or when you go to a wedding and you sit with certain people at the family tables. That, like, everybody seems to be aligned usually on something. That they all dislike. Not hate, per se, but dislike. Catholics, pre, especially it. pre-Vatican II, had a very interesting relationship with, with the Jews. And it was more of a, I think, kind of a just, like, an honest... Like, okay, the Jews are worldly people. Yeah. They're so worldly. Mm-hmm. And if you, like, take Christianity literally, and you believe it literally... Mm-hmm. The Jewish people were like the chosen people. Yes. God created Israel. them, Israel, yeah. specifically to hone them to be good, holy, great people. And he tried to teach them. Tried, 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 tried. They didn't get it. They didn't yes. understand. That's what I take from the story. And same, like they weren't. They were the first, uh, the first edition or the first test yeah, run. Yeah, and it was. It's not that it's, it wasn't successful. It just, no, it wasn't successful. It worked to a degree, they but are it worked too perfect. worldly, and they yes. didn't realize Jesus is God. They totally didn't realize it. And I mean, just to say it like this, they. Still and they still haven't. don't realize it. 2000 and yeah, 2000 years. years ago, they don't realize it. Those people are lost. Okay, I'm sorry. They are. They're I completely mean, yeah. worldly. And I don't like the worldly stuff. I think it's disgusting. Sorry. It's not You're not you're not deep. You're not showing me any substance. Yes. I'm sorry. You're not showing me any substance. You're showing me a lot of people who are bankers who are who are Whatever. who are and that's totally against God. Lawyers, don't forget. Lawyers. All these things, I mean, yeah, it's just like the scummiest, most worldly professions that somebody could want to be to, could want to be. I mean, it is. And that's why I think that there is that unification amongst people to talk about this in the closed rooms and stuff like that, which again, like I said, it's not I don't like feeling that anti-Semitism is ever right. It's not. It's not. But what I'm saying is that, no. that why is there the unifying thing among especially Christians, main or at least people who believe in Christ, that all seem to kind of understand, have that understanding, and I don't, and it's there's it's something un, to it. Uh, uh, somebody said it in New York City one time. They told me it's an unconscious, unconscious annoyance. Ooh, okay, that's yeah. That's kind of what I'm trying to describe. I didn't know how to say it like that. It's and Ooh. I'm not trying. It, whatever, man. I'm just trying to be honest. I'm being honest. You want to flag me and give me a whatever strike or whatever because I'm talking honestly about this. Mm-hmm. Why is it in the cultural bubble that you have yes. Kanye, okay, world-renowned hip-hop artist, saying what he's saying? You don't think he knows a little bit about something? Like you can't tell me he hasn't been in some Talk pretty about, exclusive uh, room with yes. exclusive 
people. Yes, and not, he's very intelligent, yeah. and yeah. he's oh, yeah. not crazy. What it is is the craziness is the world, and he's sane. What Kanye has is he has a superpower, and it's kind of like what I have too. I have a similar superpower. It's that I've lost people that are very near and dear to me. Mm -hmm. He has too. His mom, he really loved his mom. Unbelievably. He was very, very close to her. And when he lost her, it changed him. He didn't give an F. Yeah, or he stopped. He stopped giving an F. And I love the fact that he did that. He realized that we are all human. We are going to die someday. And this nothing is worldly like Jewish people think. It's not it's not gonna last forever. And you're all the house, all the stuff that you have all is the, nothing. It's all, all the thinking about money. It's all a fugazi. What does it matter? So he's right. And you know, it's kind of funny because he made his money in the Per se, not Hollywood, but like, you know, the music art, music industry, yeah. which is ran that way, worldly. And then he's now using his money and fame and success from it to go against them. Right. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 I mean, it's interesting to watch because it's funny that their own product is going against them. <laughs> Let's do some, uh, you know. Yeah. Let's do the reading of the day. All right. A reading from Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine by the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 33. The responsorial is, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth, earth is, is full, full of, of the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. Exult, you just, in the Lord. Pray from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten string lyre, chant his praises. The, the earth, earth is, is full, full of the good goodness, goodness of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Sorry. For upright is the word of the Lord. Uh, give thanks. Wait. Come on. No, for for sorry, upright is I the know. word of the Lord. And, and all, all his, his works are trustworthy. trustworthy. He loved just and right. Love justice the, and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The, the earth, earth is full, full of the goodness of the, the Lord. Lord. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The, the earth, earth is full, full of, of the goodness, goodness of the Lord. Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. And now from the Gospel of Luke, Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism, 
with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So, repeat this again. We are not ordained priests. We are not prophets. We are not perfect. We are just people, podcasters, who have done our research. Yes. So, that's why I said Jesus started the George (laughs) Floyd riots. Yeah. He's causing division. He wants to set the earth on fire. He wants to make you fight. Make you make you go to war with the godless, right? And I see. It, what do you see? I see it a little bit. <clears throat> so like, so yes, yeah, you're going against the godless because here's the thing: when I see when he says I'm going to set the world on fire, I don't see it as a fire of destruction. It's more of a fire of purification. Okay, in a sense of like, yes, there is going to be division because sadly, some of you. As he, we're, we're talking about how he came when the people weren't listening to God when he was telling them. The worldly people. Right. So, some of them, maybe the son, maybe the daughter, maybe the daughter-in-law or the mom or dad, they're the ones that are believing in Christ, and the others are not. So, there will be division. But again, even though it's against the family and stuff like that, it's to purify the world of evil. Because fire can destroy a lot of things, but fire also brings light to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, or life to a lot of things as well. Like, did you know that in, um, like in Florida, they have controlled fires to keep the, uh, from the brush overgrowing and stuff? Really? Yeah. They used to do that uh, down where I used to live. They would have fires every so often out west, west. Right. And yes, that was know the that control. That's done. Yeah. So, same idea here. Like that, in a way, that's cre- creating division amongst the animal families and trees and stuff, right? You're but right. It's not in a sense of a like good take. Um, bad thing. It's to help. It's to purify things and get things back to normal. What about the first reading? Now, the first reading, when they talk about like the family in heaven and earth, right, and yep. all the things here, the number one thing that I take out of it is that if you have the strength of christ in your heart you have this love for him by the power that works in at within us to him be glory in the church and in christ jesus to all generation forever and ever you have the love of christ in your heart you will survive forever or live forever in a way right you will live forever in heaven mm-hmm. but if you don't then it's kind of just like a seed that doesn't that gets replanted after a fire mm-hmm. that doesn't get adequate water mm-hmm. or sunlight and mm-hmm. it won't grow. So if you in this life, the earth, the entire earth can be grown, right? Like everything on this earth, there can be vegetation growing out of it, like seagrass in the water or just grass on the ground. In other words, everything on earth is supposed to be planted and grown. Now, either you're going to die and wither away into the depths of hell, or you're going to grow tall like a tree into the kingdom of heaven. Dude, why don't you just go ahead and become... uh, (laughs) Why don't you become a priest or something? I mean, it's like ridiculous. I don't know, and I don't know where these things come from, but the the cheesiest thing I'm going to say on it, I don't pre-prepare any of these. Uh, how cheesy it is but go with me please i just let god speak through me mm. i'm not trying to sound cliche cheesy none of those it just that and by the way let's say a prayer for mitch man all right wait, wait we're gonna uh, just write this down mitch man mm-hmm. and mitch man's friend <clears throat> yes 
We're going to say a prayer later for that. Oh, St. Paul the Cross today, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's St. Paul the Cross Day. In his youth, Paul <clears throat> Dan A.E. I think it's Dan A.E., a native of Probably. Ovada in Genoa, Italy. He spent a brief time in the military but left to devote himself to prayer when his uncle, a priest, left him a significant inheritance on the condition that he would marry. Paul fortified the inheritance, taking only his uncle's breviary. At the age of 26, while still a layman, he conceived the rule of a new order, the Passionists. Living a life of mortification and poverty, the Passionists take a fourth vow to proclaim the passion of Christ. Bury yourselves, Paul wrote, in the heart of Jesus crucified, desiring nothing else but to lead all men to follow his will in all things. Paul died in 1775. Wow, one year shy of... The birth of this nation. Yeah. The birth of this nation. Let's read some tradition about Paul, shall we? Let's learn. Yeah, let's learn something about him. Then we'll do some more worldly stuff. Hang in there. Hang in there, guys. Don't worry. St. Paul of the Cross' story. Born in northern Italy in 1694. Paul Deneo. Okay. Now they... All these different cross references. This is from Franciscan Media. Lived at a time when many regarded Jesus as a great moral teacher, but no more. After a brief time as a soldier, he turned to solitary prayer, developing a devotion to Christ's passion. Paul saw in the Lord's passion a demonstration of God's love for all people. In turn, that devotion nurtured his compassion and supported a preaching ministry that touched the hearts of many listeners. He was known as one of the most popular preachers of his day, both for his words and for his generous acts of mercy. In 1720, Paul founded the Congregation of the Passion, whose members combined devotion to Christ's passion with preaching to the poor and rigorous penances. Known as the Passionists, they add a fourth vow to the traditional three of poverty, chastity, and obedience. To spread the memory of Christ's passion among the faithful, Paul was elected superior general of the congregation in 1747, spending the remainder of his life in Rome. Paul of the Cross died in 1775 and was canonized in 1867. Over 2,000 of his letters and several of his short writings have survived. I do have a reflection here about his life. Okay. And by the way, saints, we don't pray to the saints in Catholicism. All we do is we venerate them. Revere them. We revere them. And then you look at them because they were as a show, like you you get taught because Catholics are show and Protestants are tell it's show versus tell. Okay. So anyway, reflection, Paul's devotion to Christ's passion must have seemed eccentric, if not bizarre to many people. Yet it was that devotion that nurtured Paul's compassion and supported a preaching ministry that touched the hearts of many listeners. He was one of the most popular preachers of his day, known for both his words and his generous acts of mercy. St. Paul of the Cross is the patron saint of Hungary. I don't know why. Why would it be the patron saint of Hungary? It's like, you know, St. Stephen. Hmm. That makes sense. It's so weird. I, I don't know. It's weird how they picked, uh, like, what they're the patron saints of. Yeah. I mean, it just, uh, it seemed like sometimes they just pick, like, a letter out of Have you hat. seen that movie, <laughs> The Greatest Lie Ever Sold Yet, that new Candace Owen flick, Owens flick? Speaking of yay. Uh, I have not. No? I mean, mm-hmm. I have a trailer here. You want to see this? Yeah. Let's play a video just to you know, get people's attention back. Fadsenzo.com. They had to have the jury believe that it was a neck restraint, it was the knee on the neck, it was asphyxiation that killed George Floyd. However, there was a ton of evidence that George Floyd consumed a toxic, lethal cocktail of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Did it appear that Mr. Floyd said, I ate too many drugs? Yes, it did. Let's put it in perspective. Three grains of fentanyl on the head of a lead pencil, enough to kill you, enough to kill me. And so they it does kill continuously people. inculcate 
the public. But when you're going through a fentanyl thing, it's because you're knee on your neck. Intentionally, I mean, fentanyl is already a doesn't help it though. Depressor, or you know what I mean. I'm saying it doesn't help you, and you're you're giving them indications. Hey, you're not listening to the indications. And the toxicologist presented that awful testimony. Do you recall describing the level of fentanyl as a fatal level of fentanyl? I recall describing it in other circumstances. It would be a fatal level, yes, in other <coughs> circumstances. Had Mr. Floyd been this doesn't help the case in, in my his opinion. locked residence with no evidence of trauma, and the only autopsy finding was that fentanyl level, you know? then yes. I know people that were in this situation, and, uh, a knee on their neck isn't going to help it. I was doing was I was actually calling the police. I was I was calling people. And, I know. I can't yeah. breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't Take breathe. a seat. I can't breathe. Here, come on out. Hey, Mr. Floyd. I mean, outstanding. Pow. Here's what I take from that. I'm sorry for being, you know, whatever. I'm not playing the like the little right cheerleader game anymore. Yeah. The the, the, the truth is always in the middle. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, I've seen I've been part of this. I've seen what cops do in their stupidity and 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 they get in their they get in their emotions and they think that they're uh, they're above the law. And uh, this guy was, you know, whatever you think about him and assume about him. He was telling you as one human being to another, regardless of if he tried to pass off a fake hundred or not, or whoever, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to say, it doesn't matter. None of those things are deserving of death. None. They're I none. Mean, counter, really? Like, I'm just going to say putting like, a, counterfeit putting, money is uh, legal for death or legitimate for death. No, putting a, uh, a you know, putting the, uh, gun the gun to, to the, to the bet pregnant. Friend. Not she. Did, he didn't pull the trigger. Did he cause her a lot of distress? I'm sure. And did he prob? Did is he that, potentially even cause the baby distress is, because of her? Yes. And is that between him and his baby's mama? And that's that's their adult decision to make a child together, not a decision on anything else. Here. So if you're if you're if you're a uh, uh, a server, you're supposed to be serving the public, serving the public to serve. Look at Jesus. What does Jesus do? Jesus served. That was true service. Go, yeah. go look at uh, your server at your diner. That's what you're supposed to be doing, police officer. I mean, we're supposed to be giving you're you a, a tip. Glorified waiter. We're supposed to be giving you Not a really. tip. Not really. No, I, you I, I, are. I mean, you are. You are. You're a waiter. I mean, you're like yeah. You're a waiter. Basically, you're a waiter with a gun. Wait a minute. Hold on. Could we? I used to always make jokes when I used, when I used to hang out at the mall and be a mall rat. Yes. I, mean, I always used to poke fun at the security guard there, whatever, but I just rethought about this. Is it maybe the police is actually just a rent rent a, rent a security guard? A higher level security guard versus is a security guard I mean, a that's, rent a cop? That's what it is. I, well, I used to make it the other way, like a rent, making jokes of the security guard being a lower form of a police officer, but is it really just the other way around. It's the other way around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And wow, they get weight. It's just, it's, you know what it is. Oh yeah. They get in their ego and they're in their perceived do we, power. Do we have to talk? This is another thing we talk about at, 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 in, 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 you know, in the quiet. Mm hmm. It's another qu quiet discussion. Another private conversation. And type. it wasn't until the opposite happened where we actually had body cams. Remember what that did? That changed everything. Remember the cell phone camera changed everything. For the first time, you had the anti-Semitic rant by the dude from uh, Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kramer. That was caught. That was like one of the first ones. All of these things started being caught. All the scum of the earth, the things that people get away with. And one of the first things was that cops are not as good as you think. And they are, and they do a lot of messed up stuff, and they get away with a lot of stuff. And there's not enough checks and balances. It's that kinda, was the first one of the first things that would, that everybody knew. By the way, everybody knew it. Uh, look, everybody knew it. Everybody. My grandpa used to tell me about the time when they would walk up, like you know, he he outsmart the cop, whatever. Yeah. Cops like, all right, fine. Oh, by the way, fix your t fix your tail light, and break it, and walk away. Oh wow! Yeah, no, my grandpa had tail like broken because he he was kind of that smart 
dumb guy if, because he was the trade worker. That's how he looked at himself, but I don't look at him like that. But he is a very intelligent man, so he used to win over the cop just by talking. And then when they're, like, realizing, like, man, he just beat me. Okay, sir, have a good day. By the way, fix your taillight. He's like, just like in the movies, like, when they would do that, he's like, that is what they did. They, they smashed your taillight. Took, his, took their nightclub out, boom, hit it, and walked right away. Got in his car and drove off. And all he was sitting there like, wow. All right, so anyway, I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> George Floyd, regardless, he was, in, he was telling you, listen... I'm dying here. I need help. I need help. Help me. Help me. Don't fucking do. Don't. Sorry. Don't. Yeah. Don't just don't keep do the uh, doing that. Yeah. Don't just keep leaving your knee on him and just. And I mean, the number one thing that they brought up, and I'm still going to bring up on their, that side of the argument there. He was in handcuffed and subdued. Why did you continue to need to do that? <sighs> the number one thing I think everybody should be able to agree on here. Truthfully, I don't know. Like that, aside from all the other things, like why was your knee there for that long? It was a long. Yeah, I mean, you're. Uh, I don't know. He was already in handcuffs. If he wasn't okay, I get your idea. You know. Mm-hmm. But you had multiple officers there. You had him in handcuffs. Why is he still laying on the ground? Pick him up and sit him on the curb, just like you do everybody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree. That 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 the easiest or uh, easiest question, but yet hardest answer to get out of this. Let's do some venerable mentions of the day. Ooh, venerable mention time! Venerable mentions of October twentieth. First fruit of the Church of the Gentiles, Saint Cornelius the Centurion. He was a Roman centurion who prayed and was generous in alms. The Acts of the Apostles narrate that while he was praying to God, he had the vision of an angel who told him to send men to invite a man named Peter. The apostle accepted the invitation and went to his house. While he was preaching, the Holy Spirit descended upon them. Cornelius was baptized by Peter. Uh, from here began the evangelization of the Gentiles. Well, now, that's interesting because uh, <laughs> I, again, just want to know how common was the name Peter back then? Oh my God! So he, so Peter appeared to him and then baptized him. Well, I mean, the Holy Goose, Saint Maria Bertilla, the Holy what? The Holy Goose, oh, Boscardine. She was an Italian nun. Mm-hmm. Her original name was Anna Francesca Boscardine. She was described as talentless and slow, and was mocked by a priest calling her a goose. She joined the teachers of St. Dorothy, Daughters of the Sacred Heart. Many people came to love her for her simplicity and her dedication in serving the sick. This was disliked by her superior who immediately assigned her to laundry work. Wow. Ego? Yes. <laughs> um, well, that, but that's sad, though. She was... She was preached, and yet you had to knock her down. That's what always happens. The Apostle of the Blue Scapular, Venerable Orsola Benin Casa. Today is her death anniversary. She was the founder of the uh, Theatine Sisters of the Immaculate Conception. She was a mystic. She once had a vision which compelled her to ask the Pope to reform the church. She also had a vision of Mary. Oh. And the infant Jesus. Oh. The origin of the blue scapular of the Immaculate Conception. Of course. The, bu- the blue scapular is one of the 18 scapulars approved by the Vatican. Of course. 18? No, I didn't know that. And you I see know. that at the, well, you see that at our, our Carmelite. Yes, at the monastery. Monastery that we go to. Everybody yep, wearing those, those scapulars. Mm-hmm. How about the protector of the Polish kingdom, blessed uh, Jakub? Uh, Stritz, I don't know how to pronounce that stuff. He is also known as Blessed James of Strapar. That's easier. Okay. He was a Polish Franciscan bishop. He defended uh, mendicant friars from attacks of secular clergy. He was close to the Orthodox community and worked to reduce tensions between them and Catholics. He organized the Travelers for Christ, a group of Franciscan and Dominican friars who lived and traveled together to conduct parish missions. The Poles called him the protector of the kingdom. 
huh? And I have this little card here also about Dominicans. Mm-hmm. Dominicans or what is it? Ang- oh, Angustin- oh, Augustinians or both. Today is in the in the Augustinian calendar. Saint Magdalena of Nagasaki is commemorated. She was a professed Augustinian. Recollect tertiary after seven years, her superior superiors were martyred. She hmm. turned to a Dominican priest. And without abandoning her being a recollect tertiary, she donned the Dominican habit as a tertiary novice. She was not able to profess as such due to the resurgence of persecutions. Nonetheless, she had been considered as a member of both orders even before canonization. The two old holy cards above uh, acknowledge her being both an Augustinian and Dominican tertiary. Wow. Wow, she has both. Well, I, By the way, I speaking of they could do that. Speaking of canonization, what is canonization? What is it? What is canonization? Canonization hmm. is the process uh, by means of which a dead person is officially sanctioned and approved in the Roman Catholic Church as a saint. The person's name is included into the official list, the canon of persons persons accepted and recognized by the church as a saint as one who has gone to heaven that individual may now be venerated universally and his or her feast can now be celebrated by all the faithful the pope alone can preside over the canonization ceremony Hmm. so just so you know if you didn't know also i think this is another is this another uh, Augustinian or Austrian? Austrian? Austrian. Austrian. Austrian huh? Praemon Stratilian priest. What? Blessed what? Jacob Jern, an Austrian Primo Stratention priest. His original name was Franz. Franz Alexander Kern. As a child, he preferred religious objects as gifts instead of toys. He made his vows at the age of 23 and took the name Jacob. He was ordained as a priest two years later. He was a priest for only more than a year before he got seriously ill. During his illness, he manifested extreme patience and faith in God and the Blessed Mother. Okay. Wow. You know what that means? He was a uh, a Mary lover. Oh, he definitely was. He loved Mary. He loved Mary. The little Mary. Oh, baby. He loved Mary. That's full of peddler. Everybody Mary. He called everybody Mary. And me and my friends would love to break and his balls. And me and my friends would love to break his balls. Slick and Crazy Mario were my best friends. Slick got his name because of his hair. Mario got his because he was just crazy. I'll kick your little fucking ass, you bunch of Marys. <laughs> you bunch of Marys? Ha, 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 ha. Keep your hands off the fruit, you little Marys. I'll kick you loose. <laughs> Isn't that great to say to somebody? Just start screaming at somebody. Be like, hey, keep your hands off the fruit, you little Mary. Before I have to kick you loose. I still want to know like, what the whole kick you loose thing means. I think that would be so hilarious to just say that to somebody randomly. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what it is. Do we have a funeral really today? Is there a funeral? Uh, what is today? They, it's Thursday, but Thursday I think they mentioned one. There's a funeral today, dude. We got a funeral today, I bet. Million dollars. I bet you a million dollars. It's well, good to go see. That's another think, thing. Another, they usually mention it, though. You'll see. Another thing about the, about the Knights of Columbus, which I love, is the fact that they participate in funerals. Yeah. And that's just good, just to be there to support people and give some more people. They were there for actually. In that time. Oh. Let me think. Grandpa and grandmother, then grandpa's girlfriend uh, funeral. Yeah. Did they? Were they? Well, all, well, the three of them that passed too were all Catholic too. So, what is this? There's a. I, I got an. I get an article here. I could read from the um, Catholic Register. Oh yeah. Yeah. Over what? Um. 
European court rules in favor of feminists claiming to abort Jesus in a church in Paris. The European Court of Human Rights sentenced France to pay the feminist a total of 9,800 euros, about 9,584 dollars, 2,000 euros for moral damages and 7,800 euros for costs and expenses, triggering indignant reactions among Catholic commentators. The judges of the European Court of Human Rights, ECHR, have ruled unanimously that a feminist who simulate, simulated aborting Jesus on the altar of the Parisian Church of La Madeleine, bare-breasted, was exercising her freedom of expression. In an October 11th decision, the ECHR condemned France for having pronounced a suspended prison sentence against El, Elwa, Eloise uh, Bouton, a former... A uh, member of the group Femin for acts of sexual exhibition. Okay. Let me continue on this weird story. Bhutan yeah, really entered weird. the famous Parisian church topless in uh, December 2013. That was a little while ago. Covered in pro abortion slogans, uh, inter interrupting a rehearsal of Christmas carols. Christmas is canceled. Wait a minute, I think I remember that happening. Femin wrote on its Facebook page following the declaration from the Vatican to Paris. The international relay of Femin against the anti-abortion campaigns led by the Catholic lobby continues. The Holy Mother El Elois uh, has just aborted the embryo of Jesus on the altar of the Madeleine. A complaint filed by the church's priest led to the conviction of the activist. A, judge, a judgment confirmed on appeal, as well as before the court of cassation, the highest judicial court in France. According to the ECHR, however, the French courts violated Article 10 of the European Convention of Human Rights about freedom of expression since the prison sentence was imposed in the context of a political or public debate. In the present case, the sole purpose of the applicant's action, for which no in insulting or hateful conduct was alleged, was to contribute to the public debate on women's rights, the judges wrote in their ruling, released October 13th. The European court further noted that the French courts limited themselves to examining the question of the nudity of uh, the feminine activist press in a place of worship in isolation from the overall performance of which it formed part without taking into consideration in the balance of the interests involved, the meaning given to her behavior by the applicant who writes like this anyway, Jesus, um, I have no idea. Is this even real? The ECHR sentenced France yeah. to pay Bhutan a total of eight, 9,800 euros. Blah, blah, blah. We already talked about that. In an opinion piece published by the Catholic website Alicia, essayist Blanche Streb wrote, to attack the symbols of Christianity, even if it is to recognize its strength, is above all to forget what human rights and modern democracy owe to Christianity, the in inalienable dignity of the human being. All right, so I think I got it pretty much. The So there's a crazy um, global globalist court. Yeah, it basically the European Court of Human Rights, it was a... Uh, like a bill thing at first drawn up in the 1950s, then it was effective in 1962. And then after that, it's basically like a whole group of people, of lawyers, like, who are protecting human rights. Hmm. So in other words, if somebody were to be, it's like a federal federal judge or federal lawyer that will challenge like whatever cases where like there may have been constitutional rights violated this is the same idea but on a like a kind of like feeling scale what this does is just sets precedent you get what i mean it sets yeah. precedence and, and the reason that that article came out because i think it had to do with uh you know like with jones's case happening it helps more of that godless agenda yeah they're not considered hateful right you can go abort Jesus in, on an altar of a church. Correct. But because the but church you can't will file play, charges. But you can't yeah. play yay. Right. And then because France convicted that person, now France has to pay money. Here's more um, godless stuff that's happening in law. Look at this. 
This is over in uh, California, of course. California legislature passes bill reducing penalties for oral anal sex with willing children. Here's a little excerpt of the bill. This bill states non-forcible sodomy, oral copulation, sexual penetration with a minor do not require mandatory sex offender registration unless there is a 10-year gap between the minor and the other person. However, a court may still require registration if it deems appropriate. These offenses, when committed without force, where the minor was a willing participant and under the age of 14 are sometimes referred to as Hofshire offenses, People versus Hofshire, 2006, okay? Um, they held that requiring mandatory sex offender registration for one such an offense oral copulation was unconstitutional if the state did not also require registration for a person convicted non-forcible sexual intercourse with a minor because it made an illegal distinction based on the sex act itself now I understand I just playing the devil's advocate here I understand Um, being caught up in the legal system at a young age and having that follow you for a long time. And I know that there's a difference between if you're forcibly doing something with somebody and there is somebody who wants it, wants to engage in that. You know that people are are into sex and and stuff at at around when? Like 16, 15? Probably 13, 14 average. 14. Like meaning, yeah. But this is once so. What again, are you going to do? I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to be uh, lib here, being, but I'm just I'm just trying to be uh, balanced in, in my in my thinking here. Now, yes, you should definitely control yourself. You can control yourself and not do that, but you're also young too. You're young too. Well, just with that, and there's within yeah. ten years of each other. Within no, t- no it said within ten. Yeah, years. I know, no, I know, but that's. Okay, so then in that case, then an eighteen-year-old. No, you're not. Yeah, you're not. That's not. Yeah, that's not good. There's why are all these things being set? These crazy precedents. Because they're trying to allow all of this stuff to happen, and my and now I'm, I'm trying to play that devil's advocate too. In my mind, trying not to be just the one-sided. It might not sound that way, but like on a real note here, like I don't see. How any of that is a positive thing for these (coughs) children. Because regardless of, like I said before, when I was 13 years old, what did I want to, just talking in my life, what I wanted. (coughs) I wanted my hair, I wanted to grow my hair long, then get dreads, okay? Okay. Well, look at me now. I started losing my hair at 16 years old, so I couldn't do it, whatever, right? But if I were to make decisions. At 16? Yeah. Yeah, at 16, my hairline started receding. But, like, at 13 years old, right? Like, how many people can say that a thir- when you were 13, a decision you made, that w- meaning that would carry the rest of your life and follow you, was something smart? Can you say that every decision you made at 13, 14 years old, if it were to carry and, you know, always be in the background of your life, would it have been a good thing? No. Well, then let me ask you this. How can you say that a child at 13 years old is willing? Because here's the thing. They may think at that moment they're willing, they're okay to do this, it's safe, it's not a bad and thing. And you're supposed to know better. And the adult is supposed to know better than that. Now, Levine, what's that person, Levine? The, the you know, the... Um, Adam Levine? No, it's the it's the, tr- the trans uh, health uh, expert, federal like health expert for Biden. Oh, Do you know that person? Oh, 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 oh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Huh? I'm trying to remember. This person. Is it, is it Levine? This person. Bad. Forget the name. Com. Now, it's very important to note that the fact that the appropriateness of a range of medical treatments, evaluations, and treatments of people who are transgender and transgender youth is thoroughly grounded in medical research. And we do not lead state laws and actions that dictate principles of transgender medical care by us, pediatric experts, many at our nation's outstanding children's hospital, including Stanford Children's Hospital. Studies clearly show that gender affirming care results in positive mental health outcomes. These health services are medically necessary services for youth and gender affirming care is medically necessary, safe and effective. There is no room for the politicalization of medical care for our youth. But unfortunately, many states are taking actions which politicize the medical care of transgender and gender diverse youth. Outstanding. Mm, Isn't that crazy? 
So just speaking of, 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 of people that pass laws that are crazy. This pe- this person's like in part of yeah. lawmaking, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like this is just this is insanity to me. And I'm trying so hard not to be one sided here. But the hardest part with the children anything involving a child, like look, you're you're an adult and you want to be transgender, go ahead. You're an adult. Children are stupid. And I don't mean that in a mean way. What I mean is that children don't know better. Actually, realistically, people are children probably until their twenties. Adults don't know better. We're stupid. I Everybody's know. stupid. But like the child, and when I say a it, child is especially even stupid. stupider than an adult. And I, I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm trying not to be mean or that. I remember being 30 years old. Uh huh. All right, and feeling my brain like coming becoming mature maturing and i was like oh my god i can't believe like i could let you know looking back on a few years and going like wow why I, would i think that why would i act like that wow it takes that long for your brain to fully mature i mean it really does and i'm um, just on this point like again if every decision that we all of us as individual people made at the ages of let me let me like it a little bit broader 13 to 15 those decisions you may then have to carry with you the rest of your life and always be on your permanent record or your record of any kind Mm -hmm. how many people would be successful in life if we had every day like today's standards on what is bad oh you were arrested oh you're not trustworthy now oh you have this certain label on you how many of us in this world would be successful? Remember what Fulton Sheen says. Which thing? Well, I mean, what he said. He oh. he always he says that there's good people and there's bad people. What's the difference between good people and bad people? Do you remember? Hold on. Good people admit when no. good people don't, don't admit yeah. when they're wrong, and bad, bad people, people do, do admit. I knew it was admitting they're wrong. I, yeah. Which way? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But like that's the thing. Like at thirteen. Or even at 17, 18 years old, I did not. I was not a good person. I was not a bad. I was not a good or a bad person. Do you know what I was? Stupid. Right. <laughs> Speaking of Fulton Sheen, let's do the Fulton Sheen thing. Oh, yeah. This is the, the wisdom of Fulton Sheen. Wisdom of Charlie Sheen. That's all I want. You can never be commanded, for example, to like pickles. We know how fast we are. I love pickles. I cure my brain. That's happening. That's what he said. Well, I guess it could happen. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> Charlie Sheen's the best. Anyway, all right. And also Bishop Sheen. Bishop Sheen Wisdom, October 20th. Mm-hmm. Remember yesterday we talked about uh, everyone else who uh, was ever born in the world came into it to live. Our Lord came in it to die, remember? Yep. So today, if then death was the supreme moment for which Christ lived, it was therefore the one thing he wished to have remembered. He did not ask that men should write down his words into a scripture. He did not ask that his kindness to the poor should be recorded in history. But he did ask that men remember his death. And in order that its memory might not be any haphazard narrative on the part of men, he himself in- instituted the precise way it should be recalled. The memorial was instituted the night before he died at what has since been called the Last Supper. He was offering himself as a victim to be immolated and that men might never forget that greater love than this no man hath that a man laid down his life for his friends he gave the divine command to the church do this for a commemoration of me hmm all right hmm you gotta remember his death that's the, you know, that's the thing. Memento like the most- Christo Christi Mori. Yeah. Uh. 
Maybe. Right? Kind of? No. Remember yeah, Christ's death. Yeah. If you're going to say remember death, remember Christ's death. Memento Christi Mori. I'm guessing that would close, be Close. Probably close. Should I check that? Let hmm. me check. But I mean, that the one, like, remember his death. Like, and remember that he came here just to die, really. So, that's what we, to remember his death is to honor his, like, the fact that he was destined for it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you want to believe that he is the son of man or not. But the one thing that you can see is that he was selfless in any way. Look at that, dude. It's remember to die in Christ. Yeah. Well, it's not really. So it's, it's not uh, right. It, but. It, it, it's close, though. Like you could have. E- that's the easy good. Your assumption on it was good because it made sense. Because I'm learning the Latin, dude. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and you know what that means because we're learning the Latin. Is it time? Yes, it is time. If I could get it queued up fast, Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord's with thee. Blessed art thou most women. Blessed for my womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Bandsenzo.com. It's time for the Latin word of the day. Woo! <laughs> Latin word of the day. Yeah, so what, what are we going to learn today? Oh, well, you know what Let's it see. is today? It's so weird. This is crazy. It's actually Greek, a Greek Latin word of the day for October 20th. It's crazy. It's Hezu. Yeah. I don't even know how to pronounce the middle word. That is obviously Greek. And then Passio. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The passion of Jesus. XPI, dude. The special insignia of every passionist. Passion Remember, of this is St. Paul of the, of the cross. This is his, his uh, he founded this organization, the Passionists. Mm-hmm. The special insignia of every passionist is a heart-shaped emblem which uh, catches in an image the meaning of passionist life. In the middle of the emblem are the words, Hezu. I don't know how to pronounce that, dude. How do you pronounce the XP and the I in Greek, dude? Could you Google that, please? Passio. Written in Greek and Latin, the languages of the early church. It means the passion of Jesus Christ. So that's how you say Christ. Hezu. Oh, Christ. How do you say, how do you even pronounce that? We should know that anyway. Three nails at the bottom of the cross at the top remind us symbolically of his suffering and death. That's bad. That bad A. Chichiro? Huh? Chimichurri? Chimichurri. C H I, and then you follow it with R O, no, R H O. Chiro. Yeah. Chiro? Yeah, I guess so. Chiro. Oh, like a like a Chiro, like you Churro. It, like a churro. It's another actually it's yeah. another Spanish food. I yeah. just made a joke about one Spanish food. And it's that's a different weird. Spanish food? That's obviously they obviously they named uh food after Jesus. Oh well, yeah. Have you ever realized the symbolization of it? Think of what the color of the wine is that they drink. Think of uh, the bread. And what is a churro? It's usually filled with raspberry, strawberry, red, and it's in a bread. How? Uh, okay. That's how, I, that's how I see it now. We're, we're probably totally off. Probably, but. It's probably you know not what? even that at all. But that was cool, though, right? It's like, yeah, a, it's a, like a, a hybrid one. We should learn some sure. more Greek, by the way, I think. You know? I mean. Don't you think? The thing that, the thing that now, gets me in their letters. Because remember, <laughs> remember, uh, borders. Mm-hmm. Borders change constantly. Do you know how many, how much the borders have changed over the course of years? Do you? Mm, yeah. Do you? Do you know anything? Huh? Yeah. What? What do you? You love you love history, don't you? Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Which borders are you showing? Look me? at this. One, two, three. Bad. Look Bad. at all the borders changing. Bad. Look at Bad. all the borders Bad. changing Bad. over the course Bad. of Bad. years, Bad. my friend. Bad. Over the course Bad. of Bad. years.
Look at us, they change. Yeah, they changed a lot. I mean, you had the Ottoman Empire, you had um, Constantinople, you had the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, the uh, Baltic Empire, the Gothic Empire, uh, Alexander the Great, uh, Genghis Khan, I think, even made it up to Greece area. The Egyptians. It's trippy, right? Well, a little bit, if you didn't know it. (laughs) Italy, see? That's when Italy became Italy. It's like 1860s. Yep. Boom. Oh, wow. It changed a lot. Yeah. But, uh, but it... Europe has changed probably one of the most. Outstanding. Pow! Pow! To, like in history, Europe is one of them that changed probably the most. Yeah, like meaning like all their different boundaries and everything. But mm-hmm. then when you look at it too, Europe is probably the most documented historical continent on the earth. I have to say, <sighs> we're the best, and that's only because no, that's not true. What about Asia? Meaning, yes, it's documented. China, China is documented, but not in the degrees that. The Europeans have it all documented individually. How many different countries know all about their past, like the catacombs in France under the city? You have hidden cities all under being major cities within Europe. While in China, yes, everybody knows that the history has remained pretty steady. While Europe has changed so much, so many of the countries, some of them don't even exist anymore. But yet there's still history of that country within Europe. There's so much historical knowledge of that whole continent. Hmm. Like meaning that there's not much advancement in it within the Asian continent. A lot of it has stayed the same. Hence why India has a lot of historical relics and so does China. Mm -hmm. But yet Europeans have more documented historical things Mm. like where they can tie it in with things of like this king that ruler this queen that person you know yeah while just over there it's like oh yeah and look that's an old monastery oh who built it somebody (laughs) hey i'm gonna read some protestant catholicism oh we haven't read this in a little time for sober intoxication of the spirit let me read a little passage of this how long is it though Oh, it's long today. I can't do it right now. Oh, okay. I want to get to. I want to get to church. Yep. We want to get on time too. If there's a funeral. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, All our, right. I will our say this. Said let's, something to me yesterday about that. Let's say a light. Uh oh. Whoa. What is this? You know what? Wow. This is actually interesting. Woobin, dude. I know how to pronounce it. Woobin. It's you know. It's it's spelled Woburn. If okay. anybody's from up there, they you know my buddy Piazzi. Uh huh. He was from that that this this uh state Piazza. Uh huh. He's from Wubin, Woburn, and uh, I saw this on the interwebs, so it caught my eye. I was like, "What, Wubin? What? Look at this, Chief Robert F. Rufo Jr., Wubin Police Department, Ten Common Street, Wubin, Mass. Dear Chief Rufio, this is from October eighteenth, twenty twenty two. Uh huh. It takes a lot of shock, a lot to shock a public defender. But when we read about former Wubin police officer John Donnelly's principal participation in the deadly 2017 Charlottesville Unite the Right rally, it caused a wave of disgust that continues to reverberate throughout our entire agency. Our clients and their communities have been victimized and traumatized by the knowledge that they have been subjected to a law enforcement officer who endorsed and actively promotes a bigoted ideology. We are going to do everything we can to dig into his cases, and we will make sure they are scrutinized with an eye toward dismissal. If, as media outlets reported, Officer Donnelly frequently posted hateful rhetoric online and was sporting controversial clothing in public, certainly... There were and are other others in your ranks who were aware of his system of beliefs. 
We demand to know what steps have been taken or will be taken to determine whether other officers have also breached the trust of the Wubin Police Department and, more importantly, the community. The Wubin Police Department's values statement touts a call for maintaining the highest standards of integrity and ethics and protecting the constitutional rights of all citizens. It is never too late to operate a department that is genuinely international about living those values. The situation requires full transparency from the Wubin Police Department, and we look forward to working with District Attorney Marion Ryan as she conducts her investigation as put forth in the attached records request. We are seeking all information in your possession involving former police officer John Donnelly. It is our our belief that every single case Officer Donnelly has ever touched in his seven years of apparent disservice to the Wubin Police Department should be dismissed. The information you possess will help us in this campaign, and we ask that you make this record request a top priority. That is really crazy, you know, what you can do um, if you're an attorney. That was actually really funny. Hip-hop you can recall. raise such havoc. Like, yeah, any police officer can be scrutinized, any police, but... But when they're doing your bidding, they're cool and they're allowed to do it. You didn't hear the hypocrisy in it? Yeah. I love it. Oh, we're, we have to protect the constitutional right. That's why we're going to examine every bit of his case because of his constitutional rights. Yeah, well, at least he we're wasn't. Vi- a, we're violating. At least he wasn't a January 6er. Then he would have been really screwed. Look but at this. This is just like. I mean, and I'm not at all advocating for that belief of that riot of that uh, event in Charlottesville, right? But what I'm saying is that those people went there with their own belief, their own what they think of expression, right? Yes. Oh, because your office, your former officer, expressed his constitutional right. We are going to violate his rights by making sure nobody else's rights were, because because his rights. Or to express himself freely. Now it's not fair. I know some officers that should that should have their records scrutinized. But it's not for that. But anyway, uh, right. Look at this Rolling Stone article I happened upon. This is interesting. Rolling Stone article: FBI raids star ABC News producer's home. Emmy winning pro- Emmy Emmy winning producer James Gordon Meek had his home raided by the FBI. His colleagues say they haven't seen him since. By Tashiana Siegel, October 18th, 2022. All right. Well. At a minute before 5 a.m. on April 27th, ABC News' James Gordon Meek fired off a tweet with a single word, facts. The network's national security investigative producer was responding to former CIA agent Mark Polymeropoulos, is speaking of Greeks, take that the ukrainian military with assistance from the u.s was thriving against russian forces polymeropolis is tweet filled with acronyms indecipherable to the layperson like ttps uw or ew was itself a reply to a missive from washington post pentagon reporter dan lamoth who noted the wealth of information the U.S. military had gathered about Russian ops by observing their combat strategy in real time. The interchange illustrated the interplay between the national security community and those who cover it. And no one straddled both worlds quite like Meek, an Emmy-winning deep-dive journalist who also was a former senior counterterrorism advisor and investigator for the House Homeland Security Committee. To his detractors within ABC, Meek was something of a military fanboy, but his track record of exclusives was undeniable. Breaking the news of foiled terrorist plots in New York City and the Army's cover-up of the uh, fratricatical death of Private uh, David Sherritt, the second in Iraq, a bombshell that earned Meek a face-to-face meeting with President Obama. With nine years of ABC under his belt, a buzzy Hulu documentary poised for Emmy attention, and an upcoming book on the military's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the 52-year-old bear of a man seemed to be at the highest of his powers and the pinnacle of his profession. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, is with thee. Blessed art thou, most women. Blessed is the fruit of thy Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Outside his Arlington, Virginia apartment, a surreal scene was unfolding, and his storied career was about to come crashing down. Meek's tweet marked the last time he's posted on the social media platform. The first thing Meek's neighbor, John Antonelli, noticed that morning was the black utility vehicle with blacked out windows blocking traffic in both directions on columbus columbia pike it was just before dawn on that brisk april day and self-described police vehicle historian antonelli was about a gra- to grab a coffee at a starbucks before embarking on his daily three mile walk he inched closer to get a better vantage when he saw an olive green lengtho bearcat g2 an armored tactical vehicle often employed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, among other law enforcement agencies. A few Arlington County cruisers surrounded the jaw-dropping scene, but all of the other vehicles were unmarked, including the Bearcat. Antonelli counted at least 10 heavily armed personnel in the group, none before anything identifying which agency was conducting the raid. After just 10 minutes, the operation inside the Siena Park apartment complex, a six-story upscale building for D.C. professionals with rents fetched about 2000 to 3000 a month was over. They didn't stick around. They took off pretty quickly and headed west on Columbia Pike towards Fairfax County. Antonelli recalls, most people seeing that green vehicle would think it's some kind of tank, but I knew it was the Lanco Bearcat. That vehicle is designed to be jumped out of so they can do a raid in that kind of time. It can return fire if they're being fired upon. Multiple sources familiar with the matter say Meek was the target of an FBI raid at the Siena Park Apartments where he had been living on the top floor for more than a decade. An FBI representative told Rolling Stone its agents were present on the morning of April 27th at the 2300 block of Columbia Pike, Arlington, Virginia, conducting court-authorized law enforcement activity. The FBI cannot comment further due to an ongoing investigation. Meek has been charged with no crime, but independent observers believe the raid is among the first, and quite possibly the first, to be carried out on a journalist by the Biden administration, a federal magistrate judge in the Virginia Eastern District Court signed off on the search warrant the day before the raid. If the raid was for Meek's records, U.S. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco would have had to give her blessing. A new policy enacted last year prohibits federal prosecutors from seizing journalist documents. Any exception requires the deputy's AG approval. All right, so... We know what's going on now. Yes, we do. We could read the rest, but we, you, we don't have time. You, you got the you got the gist of it. it basically, That's what's happening in this in this in this crazy world. So now we got Gestapo tactics happening. Journalists. Now my only thing I have on that one is that uh, just to say it, most people would under would recognize the Lenko Bearcat. Vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Not saying that it's everybody would know. Oh, it's Antonelli Delenco. believed it. I mean, right. I mean, recognize it. Yeah. It, look, it's not that anybody else would go. Oh, look at that! That Delenco Bearcat G of uh, three. No, they just know that that's the armored vehicle that they always use in raids with the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, all of them. You see, actually, they they shot they shown them on movies and other things that the vehicles that they use for it. So yeah, but. It is weird that a journalist was taken up like that, and where is he? Where is he? Is what I want to know. <laughs> That's scary. They just literally, because he's a high-ranking, well-known journalist. Costa Rica, baby! Because Florida isn't isn't any better, and, and plus, they have hurricanes. Hmm, I'd yes. rather do my Enzo.com. thing somewhere It's else. devastating. On top of the bad economy and everything else going around, then they lose all their physical belongings. Absolutely devastating. But Samaritan's Purse is always there. I felt very blessed to be able to go by you know, neighborhood to neighborhood giving out my pillows, my blankets, and uh, uh, my Bible pillows for the children. And Samaritan Purse makes that possible for, for us, for my employees and my pillow, to be able to help. It's out of the news right away. They feel like they're forgotten. And uh, just having Samaritan's Purse there was a, it's a big thing to them. It gives them hope that there's people out there that care. 
Well, praying for these communities that, that they have the courage to get through, you know, not to give up. And I'm saying also to pray for a Samaritan's Purse. If you're out there to volunteer, you can go to SamaritansPurse.org and uh, volunteer. Mm, SamaritansPurse.org. Outstanding. Huh, good show today, huh? Yes, Genghis? it was. Was it? I liked it. I think they were doing good. I hope other people uh, feel the same. And if you do, please like and subscribe and share. You know, you know it the would deal. really help us out, and we love you. Yeah, let's uh, do the meditation of the day. All right, meditation. The meditation. Who's this by the cross guy, Paul the Cross? I mean, I'm. Kinda I hoping- knew it. Paul the Cross. It's Ooh. it's uh, who died in 1775. One year shy. What is this from? A source work workbook for Paul Lucrucian studies. Well, he did have <laughs> two thousand writings. So this is called "Blazing with Christ's Cruciform Love" for October twentieth in the year of our Lord twenty twenty two. Have you understood my pleading? Have you learned the lesson well? Look upon your Jesus dying. Live in me, my heart, your cell. Lowliness, your sweet ambition, as a flower upon your breast. Wear the precious pearls I give you, my only, my own pains and passion. Blessed, if you wish to be a master in this science so sublime, enter then into the cellar. Drink the wine of love divine. Docile ever to the spirit. Yielding all to his behest. Faith, your guiding light, unfailing. God himself will do the rest. God himself will do the rest. Hmm. That was Trust, awesome. Trust in God, and it will take care of you. I love the poems. I do, too. I like all their writing, because the majority of them are Greek word readers. It's time for the Catholic Prayer of Ooh. the Day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite, And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. Uh, Stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the credo. Outstanding. Oh my god. You know what? I think it's been it, by time that Patty got the Patty. <laughs> Peppermint Patty. All right, let's say a prayer to St. Paul of the Cross. Of course. For his intercession, his holy intercession. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Oh, glorious St. Paul of the Cross, you were chosen by God to confess to all of humanity the bitter sufferings of his only begotten son and to spread devotion to the passion of Jesus throughout the world. By your preaching and holy example, Jesus converted thousands of sinners through you by bringing them to the foot of the cross to to repent of their sins, thereby obtaining for them his innocence infinite forgiveness and mercy may jesus be blessed for his extraordinary grace that was so often made present in your life and for the many miracles he worked through you for the conversion of souls O oh, blessed saint paul of the cross turning towards you now i ask that from your place with jesus and mary in heaven that you may look Look mercy upon my poor soul and hear my prayers. And with all of your love, humbly present them to Jesus for me. And please also, we pray for this, you know, please, please uh, put something in for the Fat Enzo Show. Help us grow. Obtain for me also a great love of Jesus' suffering. That by frequent meditation on his passion, I may take up my own cross and accept with holy resignation the sufferings that God has permitted in my life. Help me to suffer and to sacrifice in union with Jesus for the conversion of my poor soul, the souls of my loved ones, and for all of humanity. 
Help me to love Jesus and Mary with all of my heart and intercede for me that I may, by the grace of God, die a holy death and come at last to enjoy with you the blessed presence of Jesus and Mary in heaven for all of eternity. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And by the way, if you catch that, see how it's worded? It's not directly directed towards him. No. Completely. It's an intercessory prayer. It direct, it's, in it's, a way, it directs it to, to him to turn around and pray for us to God. It's a meditation, but it's really a prayer to Jesus. Right. It's a it's a wordplay thing. It's a it's it's both meditation in and in, uh, in a prayer. And also, we'll say the prayer to, to Jesus crucified in the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, by your life, suffering and death, you made it possible for us to be holy and to share in the eternal love of your resurrection. With, with trust and confidence, we look upon you on your cross and strive to unite ourselves with you in the passion of our daily lives. Look upon us and draw us close to you. Give us a share of your courage in times of adversity and anxiety. Strengthen us in our struggle of, against physical and spiritual evil. In our effort to imitate you in your passion, help us to look upon those around us with loving care and concern. We pray that those who have turned away from you may be drawn back to you through the merits you gain for us on Calvary, that all of us might live in never-ending peace with joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we ask in our pre praying section of the day, for uh, St. Paul of the Cross to intercede on our behalf. Please pray for us. Mm -hmm. And nomine patris et filia spiritus santi. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us podcast. We pray for the godless to find you and in turn find peace through meditation, spirituality. Let everybody in God's green globe or flat surface with a filament on top come to you and your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We pray for all those people with perceived power to lead with character and righteousness, kill their egos. And for those who don't and can't figure it out, Genghis. All right. So we have a two-part prayer today for you. So first, we're going to pray for the enemies here. We're going to pray for a cancel culture out there so that they leave people such as ye and others alone and let them have their freedom of expression and speech. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We are going to pray for the uh, soul of George Floyd, who tragically died, I believe, to a little bit of negligence there. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We're also going pray to pray. Pray for the cop. Pray for that cop. That, oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Jumping ahead. Now we're going to pray for the soul and being of Derek Chauvin, the one who made all those disastrous mistakes, in my opinion, that, end, that ended George Floyd's life. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are also going to pray for the European Court of Human Rights so that they are doing things rightfully so and not going against other people's wishes. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We're also going to pray for the pro-abortionists out there who believe that that is what they can do with their body and it is not that, and it doesn't go against God. Pray that they have a change of heart. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are also going to pray for the... Uh, I guess I would call it the pedophiles slash the people who believe it's okay to have sex with minors as long as it's, I guess, willing. We pray for their change of hearts. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we are going to pray for the Wuban uh, DA. The Wuban. Wuban, thank you. Wuban uh, DA and Wuban Police uh, Department so that they can all get over what happened in the past. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We are going to also pray for the life of James. Uh, also, speaking of Wubin, oh, uh, let's yeah. pray for Sweet Chuck. Oh, Just yes, say Sweet yes, Chuck. Yes. Pray for Sweet Chuck. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Also, we are going to pray for James Gordon Meek, the, uh, the producer. And Mitch Man. And that was, that was getting to that. We're going to pray for James Gordon Meek, uh, Mitch Man, and friend. That they all are safe and sound, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And finally, and in, in a good way, we're going to pray for Mike Liddell, the uh, End Samaritan Perth, so that they can continue to help the people who were affected by disasters. 
We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Everybody in Florida, right? Yep. And anybody who was affected by the recent, most recent uh, disaster done by Mother right. Earth. We got to get to church. Yep. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we're going to pray for all the gatekeepers and algorithmists out there that they have a change of heart and see the error and evil in their ways. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We're also going to ask that, Lord, please let us remember that you send uh, fire to this earth is only to purify and to get us back to the love of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And finally, Lord, please hear all the prayers and intention that we have nestled in the silence of our hearts here and throughout the world. We pray. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, please hear these prayers that we offer for the souls of the sick who are in desperate need of a physician. Please let them accept your son, Jesus Christ, into their hearts as their personal saviors, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And the podcast is ended. You guys can go in peace and love and serve the Lord and be outstanding to each other. That's right. See you later on the flip side, baby. And of course, whenever you hear the bells, please remember yeah. to hit those bells. Ooh. Like and subscribe and share on whatever platform, whatever Fugazi platform. It doesn't matter. It doesn't particularly matter to us. It's all it's all fake. They don't try to help you anyway, but whatever. It's all good. They got their, their people that they pick. That is true. That they select. They choose who wins or loses in life. You don't. You don't. Or you'd share. You'd share the show. Put a dollar in the basket by sharing the show. Share it on Facebook somewhere. We're kicked off there. We're not on there. Do no, us we f- are not. Yeah. Sadly, we are kicked off on Just all social media. Kicked off all social media, basically. So yeah, you, wanna, you want this to grow? You want this show to grow? You want it to continue? Let us know. Like, subscribe, and, and share, share, and comment. That's right. And hit that bell, and you'll be notified every day that we go live. Vaya con Dios, baby. Go with God. And remember, God loves you. Outstanding.